Cyprus's press is today reaping the benefits of the freedom of expression and print as safeguarded in Article 19 of the Constitution and the law regarding the press. The press in Cyprus today is free and independent and operates free from the intervention or control of any state authority. The 1989 law regarding the press also ensures journalists free access to the official state sources of information and safeguards source confidentiality. The large number of newspapers and magazines in Cyprus, which reflects a broad spectrum of opinions, positionings and ideologies, acts as testament to the pluralism of information and opinions on the island, as well as to the freedom enjoyed by these publications. By the time, however, Cyprus's press reached today's level of freedom and independence, it went through various phases and, at times, came up against a number of adversities and problems. Okay. When the first Cypriot newspaper titled Kypros, or Cyprus, hit the stands on August 28, 1878, just a few months after the island passed hands from Turkish to British rule, the repressive Ottoman legislation regarding the press was still in force. During this transitional period, which lasted from 1878 to 1914, the British maintained a tolerant stance vis-à-vis -vis Cypriot journalists and editors, all of whom vehemently wrote in favour of enosis, or union with Greece, and openly criticised the actions or omissions of the island's administration. After 1914, however, when Cyprus came under strict and irrevocable colonial rule, and especially following the October 1931 uprising, the British introduced restrictive legislation which went as far as anticipatory censorship while they also stipulated as criminal any reference to enosis. Based on this legislation, a number of newspapers folded and many journalists were imprisoned or exiled. The same policy was adhered to by the British during the Aoka liberation struggle of 1955-59, when martial law was imposed and all of the freedoms enjoyed by the Cypriots were suspended. In its 130 years of existence, Cyprus's press also experienced various stages of development, both as regards printing methods and appearance, and in relation to its content. The development and progress of printing technologies was always reflected in the newspaper's appearance. Starting from manual typesetting and limited typographic elements, there followed linotyping and monotyping, both of which significantly improved the aesthetic appearance of the island's newspapers. The linotypic linotype was the second step after the monotypic for the mechanization of the type of typography that we call stichiothesia. We passed from one type of paper to the use of plectron, πάνω σε χαλκόν τα διάφορα γράμματα, αριθμοί και λοιπά, αποτυπώνονταν σε γραμμές πάνω σε μολύβι και σχηματιζόταν ολόκληρη αράδα και αφού σχηματιζόταν ολόκληρη στήλη, ήταν μονόστιλα, δίστιλα, τρίστιλα, αυτό είναι δίστιλο μέγεθος, ο σελιδωτής τα έπαιρνε και σχημάτιζε την σελίδα. Η Linotype που μετά σε εξελίχθηκε πιο πέρα σε intertype εισήχθηνε από τα ιστορικά τυπογραφία Ζαβαλή στα μέσα της δεκαετίας του 45 και διήρκεσε και τις δεκαετίες του 50, 60-70 που έδωσε το θέση της στην φωτοσύνθεση. The transition to lithography and offset technology allowed the introduction of color and the reproduction of color photographs something which brought about a revolution in the appearance of both newspapers and magazines. And finally, the introduction of modern computer technology greatly facilitated typesetting, composition and layout, radically changing the appearance of the press.
As for the newspaper's content, this also underwent a significant change because of technology, the increase in sources of information, and the major political, social, and economic changes experienced by Cyprus in the last 100 years. Cyprus's newspapers were more comment-oriented and of an editorial nature rather than strictly news reporting, given that access to news from around the world was quite limited. They were four pages in length and were published only once a week, with most of their content devoted to articles, editorials, topical commentaries and essays, and very few advertisements. News was limited to international news agency wires and material reprinted from Greek newspapers. The end of the 1930s saw the establishment of a daily press in Cyprus, this being the result of progress in printing technology as well as of better education and improved socio-economic conditions. Content was enhanced, the number of news reports increased, and incisive and discerning journalism, complete with analyses, interviews and research, began to gradually make its appearance. By the 1950s, each city had its own newspapers. This, however, ceased to be the case following Cyprus's independence in 1960, only to make its appearance once again in the 1990s with the printing and circulation of local newspapers in both rural and urban areas thereby establishing on the relatively small island a situation existing in other larger European countries, that is, the presence of a national island-wide press and a regional one. In addition to these two categories, however, recent years have also seen the reintroduction of minority publications, and specifically Armenian and Maronite, while Turkish and English language newspapers have been flourishing since British colonial rule. Furthermore, and as a direct result of the arrival in Cyprus of a large number of immigrants from various countries as well as that of tens of thousands of tourists annually, recent times have seen the circulation of Arabic, Russian, Bulgarian, Romanian, Filipino and other foreign language newspapers. The Cypriot press of today, newspapers and magazines, is not at all lacking when compared to that in the rest of Europe vis-à-vis -vis form, appearance, color layout, number of pages, and variety of content, particularly as regards the Sunday editions. The last few years have also seen a veritable explosion of publications in Cyprus, especially magazines. Currently in circulation is a large number of political, economic, sports, men's, women's, children's, literary, lifestyle and specialized newspapers and magazines. The newspapers in circulation today can also be classified into daily, weekly, fortnightly and monthly, while the first e-papers have also recently made their appearance on the internet. There are nine dailies comprising Alithia, established in 1952 with political ideological leanings towards the democratic rally. Philelefteros, established in 1955, an independent newspaper which enjoys the highest circulation. Machi, established in 1960, it suspended circulation in 1980 and began being reissued in 1992. Its leanings are towards the democratic rally. Simerini, Established in 1976, it's right-wing, independent, and belongs to the Vias Publishing Group. Karavi, established in 1956 with political and ideological leanings towards Akel. Politis, established in 1999, independent and second in circulation. Cyprus Mail, English language, established in 1945 and independent. There are also two daily e-papers, Express Economiki and Offsite. The most significant weeklies are Tharos, established in 1961 and politically leaning towards the democratic rally. It's the weekly edition of Mahi. Andilogos, established in 1999, independent. 
Pacto Kibriaco Pondiki, established in 2003 and politically leaning towards Vico. Ergadiki Foni, established in 1947, an instrument of expression for the Cyprus Confederation of Workers, SEC. Ergadiko Vima, established in 1956, an instrument of expression for the Pan-Cyprian Labour Federation, PEO. Epikerotides, established in 1997 and published in Limassol. Vimosios Ipalilos, an instrument of expression for the Pan-Cyprian Union of Civil Servants, PASIVI. Espresso, established in 2008, a lifestyle and a time-revealing publication. Cyprus Weekly, established in 1979, a significant weekly newspaper featuring a large number of pages and widely varied content. Also in circulation are a number of weekly sports and advertising papers. In recent years, one also sees the practice of free papers, the viability of which relies on advertising. Such newspapers are in broad circulation in regional cities and towns and in the countryside, Paphos, Limassol, Larnaca and Paralimni. A typical example of this kind of newspaper in Nicosia is City Press. Cyprus magazines followed the development and evolution of the island's newspapers. The first Cypriot magazine, Efterpi, went into circulation in Larnaca on December 1st, 1881. Its creator was the publisher of the first Cypriot newspaper, Theodulos F. Constantinidis. The evolution of Cyprus magazines was slow to begin with, given that they were initially pedagogical, philological, literary or religious publications. The true blossoming of Cyprus magazines began after the 1950s with the first copy in 1957 of the Geri Diskipru, or Times of Cyprus magazines. After the island's independence in 1960 and in the years which followed, one observes a flourishing of Cyprus magazines, with the most significant ones being Okosmosimera, Icones, Enimerosi, Selides, To Periodico and Flash. The true revolution in Cyprus and magazines, however, came about in the 1990s and later, with the publication of multi-page color TV and lifestyle magazines, some of which are circulated as newspaper inserts, including TV Mania, Tileores, Purple, People, Downtown, and others. As regards the ethics of Cyprus's press, this is based on the self-control of Cypriot journalists through the code of moral and professional ethics as adopted by all of the island's mass media, and the implementation of which is monitored by the Ethics Commission, comprising representatives of the Cyprus Union of Journalists and the owners of newspapers and radio and TV stations, all under the presidency of an independent and widely respected legal expert. <laughs>